the black corner from St. Louis, Missouri. Andre the Giant. Gonna get his left hand on the bruiser. Number one, the greatest WWE champion of all time, and in many ways, the man who made the title what it is today, Bruno Sammartino. His opponent weighing 236 pounds in the white corner from Van Nuys, California. Welcome in to another edition of the Retro Wrestling Rewind. As always, I am David Fine, my tag team partner, the true Long Island IZ, Alex G., the funny thing is, you're from Long Island. I call you the true Long Island IC. There's another guy from Long Island. You know what you have both have in common? Well, you both like to collect wrestling figures, but, oh, I'm sorry. You, you like to collect action figures, correct? Yes. I'm an action figure enthusiast. I don't collect wrestling action figures, though. Hey, well, the, the, you, know, the, you have actually one thing up on him. You're actually still employed. He is currently not. He got let go in the mass layoff. In the well, I got let go, too. You did? So we're, we're technically the same person. So we both got fired from jobs. Oh, is, is that a shoot? That's a shoot. Oh, hey, I mean. We all going to get furloughed, homie. Yeah, well, I mean, hey, you know, I mean, that's, uh, hey, you know, we, at least, okay, at least you're not like Zack Ryder who bought a, he, I think this was on on the, on the one of his episodes. He said he bought like a $43,000 figure. I'm not sure which one it was, but. If I had mean, Zack Ryder money, I probably would actually do that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really feeling for Zack Ryder. He's going to be, in, um, you know, in, in another promotion coming up pretty soon. Uh, uh, starts at a uh, middle word, uh, letter E, uh, last letter W. But, you know, it's, you know I mean, it, I have a feeling, you know, after this whole quarantine and everything, uh, he's going to be back, and I'm not really worried about that. But um, Clash of the Champions 3, the fall brawl, it took place... In the great year of 1988, what were you doing in 1988? Were you even born in 1988? I was. I was six years old. Well, it, it, it came from the Albany Civic Center in Albany, Georgia. If you've ever been to Albany, Georgia, which you, I'm not sure you have, not really know, big I town. I went to Georgia for They do weird shit down there. They have good strip clubs, though. Yeah, they, they do have – Do have? well, I mean, uh, it, it's funny. The governor of Georgia um, is opening up – the state of Georgia coming this actually today, they should be open. And the thing that's not going to be open is the strip clubs. I mean, Hey, oh. stri strippers have to eat too. I mean, come on. I mean, they can't just, you know, it's not like they're school teachers, you know, when they strip on the side, I mean, that'd be kind of cool. But if they were hot teachers, but that's neither here nor there. This took place uh, September the 7th, 1988. It was a clash three. I mean, it was last week. A couple weeks ago, we, we did Clash 2. Then we did Clash 1. Now it's Clash 3. It's it's funny. Okay, so I noticed the first match. You know, we're going to be talking about that. Mike Rotundo, Brad Armstrong. But before we get to that, what did you think about the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Ric Flair, with Tony Schiavone up? And he, they, they weren't in the commentary booth because they weren't doing commentary. They were, you know, do, kind of to fill in between matches and kind of doing interviews. They were the hosts. They, they were the, the hosts host. of the events. What were, you th what were your thoughts on Ric Flair being the host of Clash of Champions? And also, what were your thoughts on the special enforcer for his match against Lex Luger um, coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks um, after this show? Well, I do like Flair as the host. It gives him something to do while he's not wrestling on TV. Uh, John Ayers, who is a San Francisco 49er, a good friend with Dusty Rhodes, good friend uh, he was the president of the UWF at one point, so that's so he does have a wrestling connection. Um, I don't remember what was the result of those matches with Flair um, in terms of him being the referee. The reason he's the special guest referee is because of the Maryland State Athletic Commission and the bullshit finish they did at the bash. So this is why John Ayers is to make sure that shit doesn't happen again. Clearly, Flair retains in those matches and it eventually leads to that Starcade match. Um, in December, uh, which I, 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 I originally assumed that John Ayers was going to be the special referee for that, but he was not. So this must have been on a house show, probably somewhere in either San Francisco or Texas, where he's from. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, but it's interesting. 
it, I mean, it's it's funny, you know. They had as the ho- um, the host Flair and uh, and um, Esquivone, as uh, Chris Jericho calls him. Um, the but the commentators were, of course, Jim Ross and Bob Cottle. Yeah. I am a big Bob Cottle fan. I don't know why. That's just maybe the way he holds his mic. He's just old school. He's just really good. He's no Gordon Soley, but he he's good. I mean, who would you? Who would you prefer more, Bob Cottle or Jim Ross at this time? Well, I don't think Bob is necessarily what you consider a play-by-play guy yeah. anyway. But this is – I do like Cottle. I do like him with Ross. I think he's better with Ross than he is with Trevani. I do like Cottle when he was in Smoky Mountain doing commentary with Ross. So they have a good chemistry together. Um, the thing about – it's not necessarily better or worse in terms of commentators. It's – we have a commentating team. Is how good is our chemistry? Like for example, Vince with Jesse is good, but if you put Vince with Bobby, it's not going to be good. Jesse with Monsoon is good, but I don't think if you put Jesse and Ross together, that didn't work. But Shivani and Jesse was good. Yeah. So like, it's the combinations. Like like Ross and then Lawler are good, but I don't think. Lawler and Joey Styles were was any good, you know what I mean? So it's just the com- the combinations could all be good. It's just basically who they're teamed up with um, will make or break a show, possibly. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Jerry Lawler with anybody is terrible because I mean, I, I mean, I love the King. He he's a legendary professional wrestler, but he's that he's a professional wrestler. He's just his inappropriate, uh, you know, female. Um, comments i mean they're funny sometimes and you know i mean and they hit the crowd that they were looking for but just him as a commentator especially now i mean i think he's just i think i like the king i like the king on commentary i think he's lost quite a bit off his fastball so even more than quote unquote inappropriate things he might say He's not as fast and he's not as quick witted as he used to be. For God's sake, the guy's 70 fucking years old. You know, there's not a lot of 70 year old commentators out there who are doing at least weekly TV like that. Um, again, the WWE should always be shifting away from um, things of the past because when you bring these guys back, anytime you use a lot of legends, um, it just makes me want to go back and watch it all raw from like 98 instead of watching the show that's going on today. It just, it just, because the show are so night and day that. You know, in their peak times, like in 98 or 97 WWF, they're not bringing legends in to save the show because their show is good. So anytime they bring in legends, you can look at it like, yeah, they know they're not doing well, so they need something to pop the audience. So I would try to stay away from that at at all costs. And You can have Jerry do other things, you know, if you want to keep him around, keep him employed, but I don't think as a color commentator at 70 years old, he probably shouldn't be out there. Yeah, I mean, and, and at this time, I mean, what was the landscape of professional wrestling? I mean, we were, you know, this is an NWA show, but we had the WWF, we had other promotions. I mean, what was, I mean, was was wrestling at a peak at this time, or was it kind of at a kind of at WWF a WWF is for sure. They're they're peak and they're strong. Savage is champ. Uh, everything is going uh, all aces for them. Jim Crockett Promotions. They're on a steep decline, although they did have a good summer. But they're already in talks of selling to Ted Turner anyway at this point. Dusty's booking is all over the place. He's fighting to keep his job. He's throwing a lot of shit at, at the TV here right now, at the wall, um, trying to get something that's hot. Like They've been running with this Flair Luger feud for forever. You know, Dusty's still doing stuff on TV. You know, Dusty's burnt out at this point, and I don't blame him. He's been doing this for a while. Uh, it, it's, it was probably time to replace Dusty for the you now for a period of time because if anyone knows anything about booking and the, re- the reason why like Memphis stayed so sharp all those years is because they would constantly change bookers. It would be Jarrett or Lawler, and then have Dundee, and they would have Dutch. You know, the guys would they would just they would just pass it. They, they would pass the book along, and then eventually get back to Lawler and and Jarrett anyway. Um, so Dusty probably needed a break at this point because a lot of the stuff doesn't lead to anywhere. It's not going anywhere and it's not drawing. So <clears throat> AWA 
Oh, it's on his last legs, that's for sure. Um, it's rough for the AWA. Like, the 85 wasn't bad. The decline really starts hitting them in 86. And by 1988, they, they lack talent. Uh, every other territory is essentially dead other than Memphis, who is doing Memphis-type business, so they're okay. Portland is on a decline. Uh, everyone else is pretty much uh, dead and buried or not even worth talking about. Yeah, I mean, it was... I mean, In it, the United States, anyway. Yeah, I mean, I mean, do you think uh, that the foreign wrestling was like Japan was was doing really well at this time? Japan's solid. I mean, they don't have. All right, the thing about Japanese wrestling is like they don't have the steep declines. Like New Japan and All Japan have been exist existing since 1972. Like they're not going out of business. You know what I mean? So it's different than saying like, oh, Georgia. You know, obviously they got bought out, but they were such such disarray anyway at the end. Or Florida, or Kansas City, or St. Louis, or Amarillo, or the L.A. territory, or Stampede. You know, the J Japanese companies they're like they're still around. Like they've had their declines, yeah, sure. Uh, they always tend to bounce back again. They're both still around, and even when they lost massive talent and they had top guys go off and foam their own. Uh, promotions would it be Noah uh, zero one to to a lesser degree, um, and a lot of the splits that happen, they're still there. I mean, yeah, all Japan's probably about the size it once was. New Japan is definitely the number one promotion in Japan right now, uh, but that can always change. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we were talking about how Dusty should have given up the book and you know kind of gone along this way, and we, then we're before that we're talking about Memphis how they passed they passed the book around to Dutch and to Jerry, to Dundee, and, a, you know, to a bunch of other people. Do you think that if that had happened in the National Wrestling Alliance at this time or a little bit before, they would have lasted a little longer? Or do you think that if they think they were just declining, it didn't really matter who was booking? They went out of business because Dusty Rose is spending too much money. And Dusty wanted to go buy a plane, and they figured out there were like a million dollars in the hole. <laughs> now, if, say, they gave the book... In 1980, late 86, say after Starkey 86, to like Gary Hart or, or Kevin Sullivan or Flair, would they have known to like, hey, let's look at the books here and and see what's going on? Um, and maybe they could have stopped the bleeding a little bit and reduced the number of you know things that they did that cost a lot of money. Like those bash tours in those stadiums, and they drew okay, but they could have drawn the same amount of people in the Omni or or in the Green the Greensboro Coliseum or the Mid South Coliseum. So they didn't really have to go to these outdoor shows. There's no like just twenty thousand people. Like it doesn't matter. You weren't doing sixty thousand people there. Yeah. Um, and I think the company just grew too big for its infrastructure. They had the infrastructure in place to go to go national, and you know buying all these territories uh you know, dead territories where you just could have waited and just you know picked them off anyway like there was no reason to buy the uwf like jim ross sussled them on that one for sure yeah i mean it was it was definitely um like you said there's nothing were, to buy yeah and and then you, you just take it on debt yeah i mean you could have you could have bought it at you know for a lot cheaper but they didn't but the first match that we had on the card was for the nwa world tv title the champion mike rotundo with Kevin Sullivan. Are you a rotundo or rotunda type guy? I'm a rotunda guy. And I and I'm a and I'm a Captain Mike. I'm not a uh, You're a big Captain Mike? Yeah, I'm not a big I'm not a um I mean, I liked him when he, you know, when he was in the Syracuse gimmick, but whenever he Not the boat I, captain? I mean, no, I I liked him when he was the boat captain. I'm not a big <laughs> I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the the whole college kind of thing. It's it's because My don't, favorite Mike Rotundo is hanging out with Norman the Lunatic and Abdul the Butcher, Mike Rotunda, when he's Captain Mike for no fucking reason. Yeah, I mean, that just gives Jim Ross another reason to say, hey, you know, Mike Rotundo graduated from Syracuse and with a scholarship, and uh, and he uh, majored in business and minored in mathematics, you know, some crap like that, because he, he seems to do that shit. He was taking he on... He stopped doing that in WWF, the second one, anyway. Yeah, he was taking on the local boy... From up the road in Marietta, Georgia, Brad Armstrong. This went to a time limit, 20-minute draw. Your it thoughts? Like they were about to push Brad here, but for some reason his push evaporated. 
I'm not really sure why. Yeah, I mean, he was he he's the best Armstrong. I mean, he is. Big f- ring, yeah. Yeah, I mean, not maybe not on the microphone because no, that'd be Road Dog. Of and, course, and, and, and the Scott's pretty good. Yeah, like they're all good. I mean, Bullet Bob is obviously the because he could work and he could talk. Yeah, I mean, he was he was definitely. I mean, he was. Yeah, I mean, it, I think they would have pushed him, but you know, um. I'm not sure how many years down, you know, I'm not sure what year he passed away, but, um, it was long retired, right? He, he didn't pass away until like the, uh, 2000s, like 2012, 2000. Well, that's good. I, I, I didn't, I kind of lost a track of him after he, uh, you know, he retired. I didn't keep up with him, but you know, it's just, I don't keep up with old wrestlers. You don't like him as buzzkill and WCW at the end? Uh, no, I don't, I think I missed that gimmick. If, you know, I, I swear he had dreadlocks, but I'm not sure. I'm sure they're probably fake dreadlocks, but I don't know. You don't think Brad Armstrong can grow him a mean pair of dreadlocks if he I mean, wanted to? I mean, he probably could. I mean, didn't the road dog have, he did. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, he, he, he may have been able to, to do that. But yeah, I mean, this is a 20 minute time limit draw. I mean, Mike I mean, it was a good match. I mean, I mean, I think. You know, Rotunda, I mean, Rotunda as a TV champion was good. I mean, he was, he, um, I mean, do you, could you have seen him as a world champion? Hmm. No. Well, in those circumstances. No. Not even as Captain Mike. No. Okay. Not as IRS, not as Michael Wall Street. No. No. Yeah, and, uh, well, I mean, he was uh, he was one of the guys that's uh, currently looking for employment, but that's you know, neither here nor there. I think he's he's seems to be close to retirement. I don't know how old he is, but he's. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he's not hurting for money. No, he's not, because uh, yeah, I mean, he's the IRS he's def- man. He's, de- he's definitely at Michael Wall Street, so. Yes. And I'm sure I'm sure uh, Bray Wyatt's taking care of. So yeah. He needed it. Yeah, no, it's it's yeah, it's good to be a top bill and, and to not be a producer, but. You know, be be a champion. They'll come back. They'll bring them back once they need. They don't. They don't need producers right now. Why would you have them? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, I heard uh, Drake Maverick's coming back for a little, for a little bit because he's been booked in the uh, that uh, two hundred five tournament. I thought, I thought they taped those already. I, they may have. I'm not really sure. I, you know, the internet. Uh, you know, they have a lot of rumors. But the next no, match, oh, huh? I just, the only thing I do on the internet is look at porn and and an occasional tweet something. But mostly look at porn. Yeah, well, I mean, you tweet and do porn at the same time. It's just, I mean, that's you're, that's, that's just indecent. I mean, it's, I mean, you you do, uh, yeah, yeah, all, all your cognito, baby, all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you only, yeah, do that. Were you were you involved in the, the uh, Twitter after dark hashtag? Uh, I'm not gonna comment. I'm not gonna comment. You were. There's a picture of you somewhere. I want to find it. I am not going to comment. That's why I'm not going to run for office, you know, but uh, not going to show your penis. The, the, the next match we had on the evening on the car was, you know, this is okay. You know, a clash of the champions or any show is going to suck or the match is going to suck when Nikita Koloff has hair. He was with Steve, Dr. Death, Dr. Death, Steve Freak. Williams taking on the sheep herders, Butch Miller. The hell of a team though. Yeah. Luke Williams with flag bearer Rip Morgan. You're a big Rip Morgan fan? No, but I, I, I love the Sheep Herders. Not a big Bushwhackers fan. The kind of shtick that they had in the WWF. Big Sheep Herders fan. I mean, they fucking bled all the time. They would bleed just walking to the ring, I'm sure. They would. They would. I mean, it's, it's... No apparent reason they just start bleeding. I mean, like, huh, okay. I didn't know this was that kind of match, and this is TV. but And they're facing two jobbers, but they... They did it the hard way, whatever. But what were your thoughts on this match? I mean, you, you were a big Nikita Koloff, Steve Williams uh, kind of combination. They were an interesting team if they would have gotten together like as a permanent duo. Like they got fantastic matches with like the Midnight Express. Like that would have been cool as shit. Um, they didn't really go with them for very long. I think Nikita is pretty much gone not too far after this. Um, uh, Shatoa back again. As he would say, Shatoa Tai, whatever. I think Steve Williams ended up by 1989. He's, he's like he left and he went to Japan. So, and these guys don't necessarily stick around for uh, that much longer. Yeah. Um, they never really did a whole lot with Steve Williams during this time frame and uh, and Crockett slash WCW as they would uh, they would sell in a couple months. 
That's a damn shame because he could have been a top contender to Flair, but he wasn't. You, you know, you know the other Steve Williams that actually did push pretty pretty hard. Not in WCW, didn't he? Oh, I know, I know what I know. He he emerged in a, in a, in the other federation, but um, yeah. I mean, I just I'm a like I'm, I've said before, and I'll stick to it. I'm a big heel Nikita fan when he was with Uncle Ivan. Um, even maybe a little bit the superpowers with Dusty Rhodes. Um, but just How about when he came back, no, as the heel, no, and he was fighting Sting, no, no. I'm just. I, I mean, I, th- I, th- I think it may have been when he found religion. I'm not sure if he had found religion, you know, the whole time, but I just, he just, I don't know. I just, I'm a, like I said, I'm a big, what, a, what about religion that makes Nikita Koloff less likable? I, I don't know. I, I'm, okay. I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to cause controversy here on the old podcast. You know, I'm, I hate Nikita Koloff cause he was religious. No, I just, I just, whenever you see Nikita Koloff with a crew cut with a flat top, now, just fast forward that match because it's not going to be very good, but or it's not going to be a very good, you know, show. But you know, I mean, he was just kind of mid cardish at this time. I mean, they didn't really he didn't really get a push when he came back with the the hair, did he? No, I think he was in and out anyway because I believe his wife was dying with cancer, and I don't know if she had passed away by this point or not, but. He basically went home to take care of her for a while, so that's why we don't see much of Nikita uh, during this time frame. Yeah, and then um, yeah, then he came back and you know was teaming with Steve Williams, but um, yeah, I mean, but but like I always say, the Sheep Herders, big fan of them. I mean, they they were, I mean, I mean, it's Butch Miller, Luke Williams. I mean, they just they the only thing I did not like about the Bushwhack or the Sheep Herders, I don't think they did it as. They didn't do it as the sheepers because they were, they did it as the bushwhackers when they freaking licked kids or licked people. That was kind of gross. When they're licking kids' heads. Yeah, that's this. That's that's not social distancing themselves. That's just getting somebody some, like uh, our Hep C or whatever those diseases venereal. This this you know you know all the diseases because you have you know all the. All the diseases, but well, not this week. I kind of silly guy. Yeah, well, I mean, good thing you can't catch that. Um, looking at porn on the internet. I'm just saying. No, I mean, I think it's probably. I mean, getting viruses on the computer. I had this real nasty one that was like roaches uh-huh. that would eat away your desktop. That was really <laughs> fucked up. You ever gotten the one that says, "Hey, your, your computer's locked, and we're not going to give, it, we're not going to unlock your uh, computer until you pay us." Oh no, because I don't click on emails from most suspect people. Oh, is that why you never click on my emails? No, exactly why. Yeah, no. But speaking of, of a suspect match, the next match, the, I, I got to talk about the ending, but we'll talk about the ending at the end. At the end of this match, Dusty Rhodes, Kevin Sullivan with Gary Hart. Yeah, this was the match. Yes, I know. I know this was a match. It's interesting because it's Dusty Rhodes and Kevin Sullivan. Um, I believe Kevin Sullivan had recently just broke Jimmy Garvin's leg. Um, and, you know, Dusty and Sullivan's feud goes back a long way. Um, but again, it's just Dusty trying to throw anything he can at the wall here to save his job. But no, he he does not beat Kevin Sullivan. He pins Gary Hart. I don't so understand do you think, that. Do you think, and I don't remember offhand. Does Dusty go into an Al Perez feud after this? I don't remember if he did. I mean, uh, I, you think I would remember that, but I don't think he went to a... That would have been a good feud if he did. It would have been fun at least, but uh, yes, Dusty Rhodes ends up pinning Gary Hart and gets the one, two, three. We've seen this finish before with Dusty. It's cheese. It's like no one has the job, so I'm going to pin the manager. Wonderful. Yeah, that's, I mean... That, I do like Dusty's post-match celebration when he's sitting in the crowd. That was cool. And the kid sat on his lap, you know. Was, well, at least it's not like Jerry Lawler, so... <laughs> yeah, that would be weird. But you know, something that something that is not weird is the show that we're covering next week. Kind of want to go into a little bit uh, before we go on to the, uh, the, the great Russian chain match between Ricky Morton and Ivan Koloff, which has a pivotal point at the end of the match. Starcade 1997. Why did you pick this for next week's show? 
This is the main event. Main event's Hulk Hogan taking on Sting. This was supposed to be the peak of WCW. This is this was going to be their WrestleMania three, um, and it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, I'm also a big fan of that Buff Bagwell versus Lex Luger match. You're a big, uh, you're a big uh, Buff Bagwell fan, aren't you? I am not. I do not solicit his services on the internet. So. But but you love the old Judy Bagwell on a pole match, even though it I wasn't did, on a pole. I thought that was ridiculous. It's not on a pole. It was on like a forklift. But <laughs> Judy Bagwell would jump on my pole anytime. I mean, she's probably like dead or a hundred now. So I'm just saying. Oh, like, that doesn't matter. <laughs> when there's a will, there's a way, my friend. I mean, yeah, I guess. I mean, I mean. Hard times. I mean, yeah. like Dusty Rhodes would say, this is the hard times, brother. The weird thing about this show, I don't know if they were injured. Uh, neither Kevin Nash or Scott Hall uh, wrestle on this show. Oh, well, I'm sure. I'm sure Scott Hall was drunk or on drugs in some. So well, he was. Some... He was. He was ringside for uh, Bischoff and Lisco, and we also have Bret Hart's debut on this show too, which is uh, very, very important. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll definitely talk about that next week. And folks, you know, um, we have some great shows coming up in the next couple of weeks. I mean, it's like next week we have uh, Starcade '97. I mean, that's uh, last week we had Starcade um, Future Shock, Starcade '89 Future Shock. Of course, today we have Clash of the Champions Three. This next match, I just do you see Ricky Morton as a Russian chain match kind of guy? No, but you get heat, on Uncle Ivan. That's for sure. Yeah, oh, what was, what was Robert? Was he hurt? I'm not sure. I mean, he. I, I mean, I, I'm a big Robert. Is this the aborted Ricky Morton uh, singles run that uh, Ricky did not want to do? That they that they that they brought back up whenever he uh, was in the York Foundation. So yeah, but I mean, I'm a. I, I mean, Ricky Morton. Of course, he's the talker of the two. Robert Gibson, great wrestler. Probably a great person, but God, he should not talk. He should not talk. And it, it's funny. He's been soliciting a lot of stuff on, um, on Facebook for like, you know, I, for, um, for, uh, Ricky Morton's son. Um, he has like a, some kind of business in Tennessee. He still has that raspy voice. It does. I mean, it's just, I guess that's, uh, he actually has a raspy voice. He, but he's just a terrible talker. I mean, he just, I not just, to the ladies though. That's for sure. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, according to the old rumor and innuendo, they uh, they did get a lot of um, a lot of uh, tail back in the day. Uh, I don't think that's rumor or innuendo. I'm pretty sure that is fact. <laughs> that, that is facts. Um, yeah, it's just, I mean, I don't know if all the girls... Now, the question is, is like, did they go back to the hotel room or did they do it in Ricky's van? Uh, probably both. Probably I'm both. Van. I, want, I want to go for a ride in Ricky's van, for sure. Oh, I bet! I bet you still has got that van. He looks Yo, he's like a super nice guy. I met him at uh on WrestleCon, and they were both super super nice. Which uh which con did you meet him at? The one that we were at. Oh, well, I mean, I didn't meet him there, but um. No, because you're too busy. I don't know, jerking off in the corner. I don't know. What <laughs> doing. Hey, what I do in New York, I can't do that anymore right now. But what I do in New York is none of your damn business. I'm just saying. It it is it is kind of funny, you know, kind of going back to New York and WrestleMania and WrestleCon. I was talking to our great great fan of the show, Bill Apter, today on on the phone, and I was also talking to my father the other day. I cannot believe this time, a little bit later, we were in New York for well, you were already in New York for WrestleMania WrestleCon, and just think, I mean. And what is going on there now? It's just, I mean, it's just mind blowing. You know what I mean? It sucks. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people who missed that going, going to Tampa, you know, that'd been a fantastic event. You know, just all the pomp and circumstances around WrestleMania weekend, even if you don't end up going to WrestleMania or don't really necessarily enjoy it. It's a cool thing to experience. I think everyone should probably go to WrestleMania. If you're a wrestling fan, at least once just to say that you went, um, because yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's a cultural kind of a wrestling experience that I think everyone needs to have, and this all the stuff going on will be all the independent shows and all the conventions and autograph signings, a lot of stuff to do. Um, you know, you have to manage your time appropriately. 
Um, it's it's like a Disney vacation for wrestling. I would, it's probably very similar to that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely one of those uh, things that you you know, don't do all the time. You just you no, kinda, you save up and go once a year. And, yeah, I mean, you, know. you, you kind of let your hair down, and I mean, especially, I mean, I think, I mean, yeah, I mean, WrestleCon they said they would probably never have it again in New York because of all the you know the unions, and it just cost them so much to to set it up and take it down. I don't know why they didn't go into to Long Island. That would have been better for them. I mean, that would have been. Jersey. I mean, I mean that, the year. The the other time that they were in New York slash New Jersey, you know, WrestleCon was in Jersey, and you know we walked like we there's a it was basically across the street from our hotel, so we just walked across the street. Yeah, I mean, hopefully they'll 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 uh, you know go back there and maybe go to uh, New Jersey. But you know, speaking of something that I go back to each and every day, it is your YouTube channel and your show. I mean, it, it's it's high it's I I told you, you know, we kind of we've been messaging back and forth the past couple of days on uh, on the text message about uh, how I can find, you know, complete seasons, which you say are not they're not possible of like championship wrestling from Florida, Georgia championship wrestling, because I'm kind of going down the rabbit hole of old school stuff of I was at, you know, speaking of stuff that I'm I'm actually probably going to probably going to get on the YouTube hole tonight, uh, you know, um, you know, after uh, after I get off of work, but. My uh, what a, a guy that I grew up watching on a seven hour professional wrestling broadcast. It was not all seven hours of him. It was seven hours of different promotions. It was called Superstars of Wrestling. It it aired on a channel called TV sixty nine here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, that W A T L W A T L, and it was also another show with this guy Joe Petticino and the great Gordon Soley called pro wrestling this week. Um, but no superstars of wrestling was like a religious experience. I would come up here. I didn't see it all the time cause we didn't get it where we uh, lived in South Georgia, but I would come up to my, to my grandmother's house, you know, once or twice a month. And, you know, I would sit in front of the couch with my uncle who at the time was underage, but he had a drinking problem and he would seven hours of professional wrestling. He would go through probably two or three cases of beer. I mean, he would legitimately be shit faced, but I love sitting down. You, it was you know from world class to they had Georgia Championship Wrestling, they had Championship Wrestling from Florida, they had so many things back then. They they had, they had WWF on there too. Yeah, they had WWF. I mean, it was it was a it was a great um, you know a, a great retreat. Which back then you. You know, you couldn't watch on-demand stuff. You couldn't watch it. They didn't have the network. They didn't have, you couldn't record stuff. So it was one of those things that if you missed it, you missed a lot. I mean, do you miss that kind of aspect of wrestling where you actually had to watch it at that moment? Or do you like how you can record it or you can read the, the results on the internet? Your thoughts? It's tough because... As a kid, now in New York, we had superstars at noon on Saturday. We had challenge on noon on Sat on Sunday. We had all American on noon on Sunday, and we never we never got the big blocks. Although I don't, I'm pretty sure there was one on Sports Channel, um, but that came and went. In terms of like musty TV, yeah, I do miss the the early. Raws from 93 and I would sit there and watch them every week, you know, at nine o'clock and then and when Nitro became a thing, I do miss that. But if I was a kid, how I was back then, because I was taping shit off TV too, I would have loved it to be like this. Like this would have been heaven for me because it was so hard. I mean, it gave me a greater appreciation for, for it for sure. Um, because I still had like the six or seven tapes that of, of stuff that I taped off the TV when I was a kid. Um, but it's like, I can't even compare it cause I would have lost my freaking mind. I can watch anything I want at any time. That sounds insane to me. That's yeah. the way it is right now. Yeah. Um, and, and, and with everything, you know, that's going down and I mean, they, of course the, uh, the, the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantos, um, deemed the world wrestling entertainment as an essential service. So they are now taping their stuff or they're now not taping. They're actually now live on Friday and Mondays. Um, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, 
you know, you know, I think that you're not going to get, I mean, you're not going to get the, the quality matches, the, the reaction to the crowd, of course, when there's no one at the arena, cause they're wrestling in front of no one except for the commentators and the, and the referee. I know they have to do it live because I guess it's part of the contract. Although I believe there is language on the contract stating that, you know, due to do what's due to what's going on here, um, they're not going to be held. Uh, that's not going to be held against them. Keep in mind when they taped superstars, that was like six weeks worth of TV. They, they, they shot in one shot. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they could probably shoot three or four months worth of TV if they really want to. There's guys there that know how to do it. Um, I don't know why they're being so like we have to be live. We have to be live. It's it. I don't watch it anyway. I haven't. I don't really care. Um, but I'm not. No fans. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean it's. It, if I was it, them, I'd put on. I would put on Attitude Era Falls or something. Like yeah, it, it just it is kind of weird. I mean, it's just not like not like wrestling fans now with this whole thing going on, can't log onto the network and see years and years and years and years. I have enough of wrestling. wrestling footage so I can watch wrestling every hour of every day for the next 20 years and not watch the same main plugs. I, I'm sure. But you do not. Do you, do you currently own any championship wrestling from Florida? I do. Any Georgia championship wrestling? I do. Hmm. Those are my two favorite promo. I, I you didn't I, ask me if I had them. You asked me if I had them complete, which I don't. Because I, if 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 they existed complete, I probably would have had it. Yeah, I mean, how, how many? How many? Well, I have. I have seventy nine eighty. I have. Let's see. What do you have them cataloged in the old the old personal confuser? I mean, they're on hard drives. So yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I bet you they are on a hard drive, but that's beside the point. Sorry. Although most, most of the stuff I have, especially the stuff that you probably want to see, which would probably be 82, 83, mm-hmm. is on YouTube anyway. Yeah, I know. I know. That's, and That's where I got it from originally. Yeah, I know. And I'm, I'm also a big Georgia fan, but, you know. Uh, Florida is a little bit harder because Florida is in pieces. Yeah. But Georgia so it's like. Georgia's, you know, get complete shows. Yeah. Um, but you watch them and it's fine. But the problem with those shows is the fact of the matter is you don't see any of the matches. So, you know, you're watching cool promos. That's awesome. And a couple of squash matches, but you're not seeing Roddy Piper taking on Buzz Sawyer and the Omni because they didn't tape those shows. No. Like those are some of the house shows that. You know, watching at the time, like, oh, I have to go to the fucking Omni. That's great. But when you re when you rewatch it, it's like, all right, so they had this match with Buzz Sawyer and Roddy Piper. It was a dog collar match, and now what? All right, they're on to the next thing. Yeah, I understand. And now we're on to the next thing, the Russian chain match. Ricky Morton taking on Uncle Ivan with number one Paul Jones. This had a uh, a twist at the end. What were your thoughts on this match? Just to start out. I mean, it's an interesting match. I do I do enjoy Uncle Ivan. Ricky Ricky is good. It was a fun match all around. I mean, there's no issues there. The problem with a lot is like they don't lead and they don't lead to anything. Yeah, like, yeah. What does this lead to? Probably nothing. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I they didn't have a feud. I mean, the spoiler alert: Ivan Koloff turns on uh, Paul Jones or on Paul Jones because Paul Jones um, cost him the match. And then this is when Jim Ross said, "Oh, there's another Russian. Let's call them Russian Assassin One and Russian Assassin Two. So, just saying. Wasn't one of them uh, Jack Victory? I'm pretty I sure think I think so. I think so. Yeah. I mean, and I'm not sure the other one was, but yeah, I mean. Angel of Death was the one here. Yeah, were, were you were you a big fan of uh, the the Russian assassins? No, I don't think anyone was. I don't think they were meant to uh, be more than nothing. <laughs> they were, well, they did nothing. What you know? I mean, 
Honestly, Paul Jones and his deal is running out of steam because when you have to turn Uncle Ivan uh, to face Paul Jones, then he, he got some problems. Although, although you, we don't think Nikita and Ivan recon, reconciled, right? No, I don't remember that happening on TV, no. which probably should have. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, Paul Jones. I mean, he's been in his legendary feud for. He probably was still going on with the feud with uh, Jimmy Valiant back then. I mean, I'm sure they're still they're still, they're still I mean, feuding. Yeah, I mean, if Paul, Paul Jones is a police officer, from what I understand. Yeah, I think he was. Well, I mean, isn't he dead? Yeah. So I mean, he's probably not anymore. But I mean, I think I think the feud's still going on, even though Paul Jones has passed away. The feud is still going on between. He had a body shop. Not the body shop, but just in Detroit, but the other body shop. He did pass away on April 18th, 2018. Oh, number one. He was the number one baby face in mid Atlantic before Flair. I mean, like he, was a, he was a top guy there. What were your thoughts on him as a baby face and champ? Flair? Or Paul no, Jones? Paul Jones. Good for the time. Yeah, I mean, was it believable? Older. Oh, yeah, for sure. Although. Mid Atlantic wasn't necessarily known as a singles territory. It was still pretty much a tag territory until until uh, Jim Jr. took it over, and that's when they started making the switch. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, ow. yeah, I mean, it was definitely. I mean, I, I was a big Paul Jones fan. I mean, I whenever he was with uh, uh, Manny Fernandez and uh, Rick Rude, um, that's probably that's probably peak as uh, manager Paul Jones. Yeah. I mean, that that would be Rick R U D E, not R O O D, like. Uh, mm-hmm. I I saw that on a um on on a on a show. I was like, huh? They changed the spelling of his name, but I don't know why. But that's just whatever. But uh, when we come now to the main event, I I don't understand this main event. Sting Barry Windham for the U.S. title. I mean, I mean, do you think we need to go over here? By the way, I'm sorry. Hello. Hello? Sting needed to go over here, and he did not. Yeah, I mean, he 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 definitely needed to go. I mean, why didn't they? If Dusty was booking this, why didn't they? Why didn't Sting go over? I don't know. I have no idea. Sting's eighty-eight. Well, past the Flair uh, clash match, like it's rough. Like yeah, it's the main event here, but. He needed to go over. If if Sting's gonna be your next perennial challenger after Luger, then you need to put the U.S. title on him at this point. Let him grow into it. But Luger has dominated that belt for so long, and then you know it's just it's just a small gap with with Barry anyway before Luger takes it back. Um, I don't know. Sting needed a push here. Like he would spend his 1989 like having matches with the Iron Sheik and shit. Uh, I mean that. I mean, I think that would have been great if it had been back in 1986, the Iron Sheik. But I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, of course, uh, you know, Barry's uh, managed by the great James J. Dillon. Um, I mean, I'm just like I said, big James J. Dillon fan, big Paul Jones. I mean, I'm a, all these managers in this um, in this uh, show. I'm a big fan of Gary Hart, definitely. Paul Jones, definitely. James J. Dillon, definitely. But I mean. Overall, what there's no cornet on this show. Yeah, I mean, I wish there was, but I mean, his team wasn't on here, so no, man. because of what, you know, you could have done Nikita and Williams taking on the Midnights. Yeah, you probably would have had a better. Not that the Street Herders match was bad, because every match on the show is good uh, from a quality standpoint. The problem is, is where is where is this coming from, and where is this going? I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't sure what this whole show leads to. I mean, it's, I mean, and, you know, at least shows now, you know, kind of got a, a storybook ending, you know, or, or a way. Can, but these, this clashes back then, some, some had, you know, uh, pivotal. It's just shows that have shown. I mean, they did a fantastic way. They did a 5.4, which any wrestling company would kill for a 5.4. And it probably be worth billions to any kind of cable or network. Um, cable company, uh, cable, uh, millennia network, yeah. Um, so their ratings are sky high, it doesn't necessarily draw because they only need 3,700 fans, but the fans in Albany, Georgia were very lively, uh, which is a good thing because you know, those those Georgia fans 
you know, they, they get into it. And it's, it's the home of the promotion, at least not at this point, but it, uh, it will be moving forward. And, you know, the, I'm sure there was Turner executives at this show, seeing how the crowd reaction was. And they went right back and looked at the, the ratings. The ratings were really, really good. You know, so they made the decision to, uh, to purchase it. So, yeah, I mean, I d- definitely think the crowd, the crowd in the microtone of Brad Armstrong match, they were freaking popping for Brad Armstrong. I mean, they, it was, it seemed to be a lot of ladies in the crowd and they were going crazy for, for Brad Armstrong. I mean, I guess he was a big, uh, he's a big lady pleaser. So I'm just, yeah, uh, that's what just, I call my thing, the lady pleaser. <laughs> but overall, I mean, Looking back, what were your thoughts? I mean, what did you, what would you give this show? I mean, you know, between one and a 10. It's probably like a six. It's good matches, but nothing memorable. Yeah. Um, doesn't, doesn't necessarily lead to either the clash after this or the season beatings or, or a Starcade. Um, just, it's just a nondescript. It's just perfectly acceptable wrestling, but doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. I mean, I'd probably give it like a, a seven. I mean, it was good. I mean, it was, I mean, I mean, it wasn't the best clash. I mean, I'm always going to think number one, at least, you know, the first three, number one was, I thought was the best, but. Best clash is, is nine, but. Nine. We'll get to that at some point. No, yeah, we'll definitely, we're definitely going to get to that because, uh, you know, we, we've got some, we've got some great shows coming up. I mean, you've, folks, uh, I'm going to be posting um, in the next couple of weeks, the shows that we're, we'll be covering. I mean. Alex has some great shows that he's picked. I mean, some, some barn burners. I mean, we're not, we're not, we're not looking at that, that promotion, the, that you don't want us to watch. Um, what was that? XPW. Uh, no XPW, unfortunately, maybe, maybe next season, uh, in season four of the, uh, the podcast, if we get renewed. Um, but no, we have some great shows next week. We have Starcade 80 or Starcade 97, um, with, uh, Hulk Hogan and sting. I mean, that's definitely a, worth watching i mean however you watch it you know get versed if you haven't watched uh, starcade 97 in a couple of years watch it on the network just uh, type in starcade go to 97 and you'll find it or you can find it on youtube there's many different ways to to find it but uh, any any parting words before we uh before we head out today on the uh, the show dusty yeah. need to give up the book maybe to sullivan maybe to gary hart maybe to flair and it's sad to see the end of days for Jim Crockett promotions. Yeah, I know. I mean, the, the, the days for Jim Crockett promotions, like you said, are are numbered. But for the great Alex G, as always, I am David Fine. Next week, we'll talk Starcade 1997. But as always, we'll talk to you in the past. <laughs>